I've recently been watching some of Father Fish videos called The Simple Secret to Keeping Your Aquariums Clean and Stop Changing Your Water. And while his insights are invaluable, I've got my own perspectives to share, especially regarding water changes in shrimp tanks. So let's demystify this topic. One common misconception among you shrimp keepers is that water changes are inherently problematic. But it's not the water changes themselves that's a problem, it's how they are done and the way you set up the tank. New shrimp keepers often face issues like sudden parameter swings and stress to shrimp during these changes. So let's uncover how to handle this effectively. Let's talk about the natural habitats of shrimp first. Before we dive deeper, let's appreciate the diverse habitats where shrimp naturally thrive. Right? So you're looking at oceans, rivers, ponds, swamps and rock pools. Each of these environments has its own unique inflow and outflow dynamics. Crucial for life that they support, right? Unlike the vast self-sustaining systems, our home aquariums are closed environments. Here's where we must manually replicate these natural processes, understanding that each habitat demands specific care and attention. Now onto your water source, the type you use, be it tap, distilled, reverse osmosis, significantly influences your tank's ecosystem. Your skills in an aquarius are equally crucial. Mastering the art of testing and adjusting water parameters to suit your shrimp is a skill that evolves with experience. All right, let's talk about Neocaridina first. We're going to feed the tank behind me. As we talk about it, it's just to give you some eye candy. I'm going to give them some pellets like this. And guys, you can see that my Neocaridina tank here is very full. I have lots and lots of Neos in it. And they're swimming, they're very active. And yeah, it's a good environment for them. Let's talk about uh, Neos, like we were just talking about, right? They are very, very adaptable, can handle various water change routines, but they do best, guys, on an under substrate like this. And this is where a lot of people get into bother. I'm gonna use a, a little example here. I had a question on my forum today where someone was saying, is it the best idea to do no water changes like a lot of people say in a Neocaridina tank? And they put a picture up of their Neocaridina tank. And guys, if you want mass breeding in a Neocaridina tank, right, you're better going with an inert substrate because you will need to do bigger water changes to get your shrimp into breeding condition, to get them to want to have babies more. And yeah, this is where people run it. The problem is because some people don't understand the difference between an active soil and an inert soil. And the, the, the problems they have is when they set up a tank with an active soil, shove it into a tank like this, and then they use their Tap water is an example, and they don't really know what's in the tap water because they've not got that involved in it yet. They don't have the experience. Uh, they do bigger water changes because Mark Trump Tanks on YouTube said, do a bigger water change, your neos will breed more. Well, that is where a lot of people have the issue, as in soft water tanks typically will have a very, very low pH. Right? If you have an inert tank like this, it will have a neutral to higher pH. Right, and the differences, guys, here is when you do a water change with unknown parameters into a tank with soft water, you dilute the pH that's in the water and you make it jump, you make it jump up or down, right? Shrimp specifically hate this. This is why a lot of you will see neocaridina uh, molting or having field molts or the ring of death or something like that. This is, this is where you'll see this issue because you're putting water in that you don't know what's in the water into a tank that, that is not really set up for bigger water changes, right? So if you want to breed neocaridina, you want to breed loads of them, use an inert substrate, right? And this allows you to do bigger water changes as much as you like, right? If you use neocaridinas and you want to use an active soil because you have lots of plants, you must keep your water changes smaller. I touched on uh, neocaridina there. Let's talk about caridina for a second. Caridina specifically need um, a soft water substrate in their tanks, so this means that you will need to do smaller water changes, right guys? I, I think I said that I can do easily do 50% water change in this tank a week because I know the water I'm putting in and I also know the substrate that's in the tank. Um, if you don't know this stuff, you're better sticking to small water changes, right? So if you have Caridina B shrimp tanks and you have an active soil as an example, what you're better doing is keeping the water changes small, small as possible and then uh, there'll be less changes in the tank and you, you should get more breeding whatever else. Okay, we have talked about Neocaridina, we've talked about Caridina. I'm going to just briefly touch on uh, Opa'uli because they're an exception to what we're talking about here. And this more aligns to what Father Fish was saying in his videos where you really don't, don't want to do water changes and whatever else. Opa'uli really don't require any water changes ever, period. 
Now you don't have to put water in and take it out and put it in and take it out. Right? You don't need to do water changes like you used to do. But what you do need to do is you need to tap it up with a source of pure water. So this can be um, rainwater that's been purified or reverse osmosis water into the tank because this type of shrimp, Opuuli, have evolved to live in really, really harsh conditions where they don't get affected by ammonia and nitrates quite as much as the other shrimp. They've even developed ways of, I believe anyway, ways of sucking in oxygen from the water through their legs as well. So they've adapted to their environment and this is where things like Neocaridina and Caridina haven't adapted to this type of environment. So you need to bear that in mind when you do this, that not all shrimp are the same. Right? You can't treat them all the same, you can't treat the water changes the same, you can't put them all in the same soil. You can't not do water changes and you can't do loads of water changes. Shrimp are very specific, right? You need to learn how to make the water and you need to learn what the parameters of the shrimp are and then you need to match the water to the parameters. Guys, Father Fish also mentioned in one of those two videos that I mentioned at the start that uh, microbes play an important factor in our tanks and that is true, that is 100% true. The better beneficial bacteria that you can get in your tanks the better your shrimp's health will be and the longer they will live, right? So I have my own way of adding my own bacteria to my tanks beyond the standard way that you will typically do and that is with this here. This is called Lacto. You would have seen this in the video that I made a couple of videos ago, right? And this stuff is good. It's a type of bacteria you put in here and it deals with all the mess in the bottom. It's very, very good for uh, bee shrimp tanks as well because it's quite acidic and guys i must make this now <laughs> i love the stuff you can probably see it here if i give this a little tip this was my recent batch it's got the third on it of december and you can see just how much bubbles and whatever else is in there and yeah this one is just amazing and the, you know what else is really good about this lactobacillus bacteria that we can add to our tanks is it's actually good for us as well, look. Oh God, it tastes so bad though. It tastes a little bit, guys, like uh, vinegar. And that gives you an idea of how acidic that this can be. It is really, really good if you, had a, if you have a bad stomach, for example, or you have regular bad stomachs, make yourself some lactobacillus. And this is not just something, guys, that I've made and I'm risking my life here. This is it's a well-known thing, this, that this helps with gut microbes and it will help with um, aquaculture stuff as well. So I've been using this in all my tanks for quite a while and yet I really don't see any deaths anymore. Bottoms up. And uh, yeah, th this stuff helps with the gut of the shrimp and it's been proven, there's a lot of research been done on this as well, where uh, microbial goodness and a shrimp can actually make the shrimp grow faster because it's not fighting infections and all that crap in its body and yeah, the shrimp are just generally healthier they actually grow bigger they have more eggs and whatever and whatnot so all of this stuff guys that we've been talking about today comes down to a few things right and it just comes down to mostly experience this is stuff that you will learn as you go along how to prepare your water and how to do water changes for different tank setups. Just to conclude, Shrimp Farm, remember there's no universal rule for doing water changes for all shrimp types in shrimp keeping. It's all about understanding your shrimp specific needs, the water they're using and how your skills in an Aquarius evolve over time, right? So stay curious, keep learning, and most importantly, enjoy the rewarding journey of shrimp keeping. Until the next time guys, happy shrimp keeping.